Right, so on this video, we're going to be looking at factorising. So that is a common factor, completing the square and the trinomial. So your first one, type 1, is the common factor. So we've got 3x minus 18 for our first one. So you're looking at those two terms, the 3x, the 18, and you're trying to see if for the largest common factor, basically. Uh, now, sometimes it's quite straightforward, like in this one, and you could quite easily see it's number 3, which leaves you with 3 times x would give you 3x, a minus sign, 3 times what gives you 18, 6, and there you go, done. The next one, 8p squared minus 20p cubed. So we have a common factor in terms of our number and also in our letters as well. So 8 and 20. Now, it's always the highest common factor you want to go for. So although they are both even, we're not looking at two. We would want to see four. In terms of our letters, we have a common factor of P as well. So our biggest common factor from there would be 4P. Open up the bracket. Four times what gives you eight, two p times what gives you p squared p so that would be 2p minus 4 times what gives you 25 p times what gives you p q q so that's common factor i'm hoping everybody knew that one anyway so type b is the difference of two squares so quite a few ones here so the key thing about a difference of two squares is you have two terms they are both squares and it should always be a minus sign in between them because that's what the word difference means. So this is your sort of basic rule, if you like. So your first term is a squared. Take the square root of that, it would be a. The second term is b squared, so the square root of that would be b. So that goes to the back. You then make one a minus and you make one a plus. So in this one, we can open up two brackets. Square root of t squared is t. Square root of 16 is 4, and we make 1 a minus, make 1 a plus. The next one, don't be put off if your number's at the front and your letter's at the back. Something's no right here. There we go. So the first term is 25, so the square root of that is 5, so that goes to the front. The back term is q squared, so the square root of that is q, so that goes to the back. You make 1 a minus, and you make 1 a plus. Next one, right, this one's a wee bit more complicated. We have to be extra careful here. The square root of 4p squared, well, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of p squared is p, so that will be 2p at the front. Likewise here, square root of 49 is 7, and square root of q squared is q. So it's 7q. Make one a minus, make one a plus. Right, type C, trinomial. So... Everybody does this slightly different. I'm just going to teach it on here the way I would teach it eh, for the benefit of anybody who doesn't recognise my voice. It's Mrs. Davidson. So this, this is how I do it. This might be completely different to the way your teacher does it. If you are just finding this way confusing, then please just stop the video and go in and ask your teacher about this, okay? Um, or you might find this way I don't know, maybe seeing a different way might be okay for you, you know. Um, so I'm sorry if this is not the way you have learnt it. This is the way I teach it. Um, I would have to go around every single teacher and make every single video um, and that would just take me forever. And I've got all the other ones to do as well. So basically, I looked at the number at the back and it's number 8. I think about my factors of 8. So my two numbers that are going to be in the brackets have to always multiply together to give you the back number and they add together to give you the middle number. So we're concentrating on the back number first to think of what the factors of 8. So I always start with the number 1, so it would be 1 times 8. I then move on, does 2 go into 8? Yes, it does 4 times. 3, no, and then you're back to the 4. Now it's plus at the back, so that means there are two pluses or two minuses. I look to the middle and it's a plus sign, so I make them both plus. So I'm now looking to see which ones add together to give me 6. So 1 plus 8 is 9. 2 plus 4 is 6. So there you go. That's going to be my two bits. So I've got x. So I'm going to have a plus 2 and a plus 4. On this one, so again, number at the back is positive 20. 
So factors 20 would be 1 and 20. Does 2 go into 20? 2 t 10 times. Does 3 go into 20? No, 4. And that brings us to 5. Now, this time, because it's positive, again, it will be 2 pluses or 2 minuses. But we now have a minus, so that means it's going to be 2 negatives. So over here, I'm just going to put my minus signs next to all the numbers. So I'm looking for the 2 that add together to give me negative 9. Negative 21, negative 12, aha, negative 9. So two brackets, P and P, and it will be minus 4, minus 5. Right, so on this one, I've got to be careful because it's negative 40 at the back. So I'm going to ignore the negative for one wee minute. So factors of 40 are 1 and 40, 2, yep, 2 times 20, 3, no, 4, yep, 4 times 10, 5 times 8, 6, 7, and then we're back to 8. So we've exhausted all the factors. Because it's negative, that must mean for when these multiply together to give you a negative, one must be positive and one must be negative. I look to the middle and it's a plus sign. So whatever the sign is in the middle, I put that next to the biggest number. Now, the way I line up the factors, my biggest numbers are always in the right hand side and my smaller numbers in the left. So I put all my pluses next to the big numbers in the pairs. So all my negatives down here. So we're looking to add together to give you 3, so that would be 49, 18, 6, ah, there we go, is our 3. So two brackets, y and y, and it's going to be minus 5 and plus 8. Right, next one, negative 24. And factors 24 are 1 and 24. 2 goes in 24 12 times, 3 goes in 8 times, 4 goes in 6 times, 5 doesn't go in and then you're back to 6. Now this time it's a negative in the middle, so it will be the negative sign that goes next to all the big numbers and little pluses next to the small numbers. So we're looking for negative 5, negative 23, negative 10, there we go, negative 5. And you can see that wee bit there, negative 2. So 2 brackets, W and W plus 3. Minus 8. Right, the next one. So these are the real hard type where you have um, a coefficient in front of the x squared. So there's a number basically in front of the x squared. Now, this is the way I think Mr. Smith does the other ones. So if you somebody in his class and you've been watching this, then this is the way you would have done those other questions. So basically, you take the number in front of the x squared and the number at the back and you multiply these together and that gives you a number 12. So again, that will be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. It's plus at the back, so signs are the same, so either two pluses or two negatives. It's plus in the middle, so they're all pluses. So we're going to do something a wee bit different this time. So we take the first term, 2x squared, and we take the back term, plus 6. And we split this 13x up. So we're looking for the numbers that add together to give you 13. Well, it's 1 and 12, so I'll put plus 1x, plus 12x. So I find a common factor here of x, and it will be 2x plus 1. Plus, I take a common factor at the back 2, which would be the number 6, and it's 2x plus 1. So basically what you always want to end up with is a matching bracket of, in this case, 2x plus 1. Then you've got an x here, a plus 6 here, so that would be x plus 6. So in the next one, 3 times 5 is 15, so just 1 and 15, 3 and 5. This time, again, it's plus, but it's 2 pluses or 2 negatives, but it's a negative, so it's going to be 2 minuses, so put all your negative signs in. I think it's quite clear it's going to be negative 3 and negative 5 to give you negative 8. So 3y squared at the front, plus 5 at the back, splitting that up, so it'll be negative 3y minus 5y. Now, break it up into two sets of two. So common factor here is 3y, and you're left with y minus 1. Now, this is the hardest one of all because this is a negative sign here. So when I take out my common factor of 5, I've got a y, I've got a 1. But because this is a plus here, and I've taken out a negative, I also have to make this a negative because a negative times a negative would give you a positive. So you can see we've got a common bracket of y minus 1. So if you don't get a common bracket, you've done something wrong. So if you had put a plus sign in that second bracket, that would maybe have been your opportunity to go, oh, wait a minute, and then work out what you've done. Next bracket, you've got a 3y and a minus 5. 
Right, over we go, two more of this type. So 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So again, 1, 12, 2, 6, 3 and 4. It's a plus at the middle. So, sorry, because it's a negative at the back, remember, it'll be a plus and a minus. Plus and a middle, so that goes next to your big numbers. Minus is next to your small numbers. Looking for a difference of 4, well, it'll be negative 2 plus 6. So that will be 3p squared minus 4 at the back. Now, it's always easier to put your negative first because then you don't end up with this negative here. So negative 2p plus 6p. So break it up, 2 and 2. See what I mean? You've got a nice plus there now. So common factor of p, and you're left with 3p minus 2, plus common factor of 2, and you're left with 3p minus 2. So a bracket of 3p minus 2, another bracket of p plus 2, and there you go. Right, next one, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, so 1 and 10, 2 and 5. Again, a positive and a minus to give you that negative. Negative in the middle, so put that next to your big numbers, plus is next to your small numbers. Negative 9, it's got to be 1 take away 10. So 5t squared minus 2. Now, as I said, it's easier to put your negative first. So I'd put negative 10t plus my 1t. So, sorry, I don't know what happened there. So split it up. Again, nice wee positive in here because I put my negative first. So 5t is my common factor. And we're left with t minus 2. Plus, now, I don't technically, you would argue, have a common factor here, but you always have a common factor because if it's not staring at your face that they're both even numbers or whatever, the actual common factor would be 1 because 1 is always a common factor. So you're just left with t minus 2. So t minus 2 is my bracket and then I've got 5t plus 1. Now, if I'd written that around the other way, 5t plus 1, t minus 2, remember it means the same thing. Right, type D is our mixed. So straight away, I've put it in capital letters because it's very, 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 very important. Always look for a common factor first. You automatically look at that first one. You think, oh, it's a difference of two squares. The square root of 4p squared is 2p. The square root of 16 is 4. So 2p minus 4, 2p plus 4. That would not get you the full marks because you always look for a common factor first because you could always take common factors out of that, those brackets. So 4 and 16, well, we've got a common factor of 4, which leaves us with p squared minus 4. So 4 is outside, and it'll be a p, oh, dear me, what happened there? And a p, square root of 4 is 2, make one a minus, make one a plus, and there you go. That's a very interesting looking p now. Now, again, in this one, your automatic response is maybe to think trinomial, but you must always look for a common factor first. So you can see there is a common factor of the number 2, which leaves you with x squared plus 2x plus 1. Breaking that up, the beautiful thing about the number 1 is it can only be 1 and 1. So it's x and x plus plus. And if you want to be super fancy and show off a wee bit, you can make that x plus 1 squared. Right, so key thing is always look for a common factor first and then is there a difference to two squares, is there a trinomial? Type E, the tricks. So the two tricks here, I've done one, the difference to two squares and one trinomial, but it's essentially the same trick where it's x to the power of 4. So you have just got to realise that x to the power of 4 is in fact x squared squared. If you think back to indices, 2 times 2 is 4. So the square root of x to the power of 4 would be x squared. Square root of 1 is 1 and 1, minus and a plus. Now, what you should notice in the first bracket is you have a difference of two squares because 1 is a square, x squared is a square, and you've got a difference, a minus sign. So square root of x squared is x, square root of 1 is 1, make 1 a minus, make 1 a plus. This bracket here is a plus sign, so it's not a difference of two squares, it's a sum of two squares, there's no rule for that, so you keep it as it is, x squared plus 1. So that is your final answer. 
Likewise, in this one, factors of two are just two and one. They're both positive because it's a plus at the back and a plus in the middle. So a, that gives you your three. Mm. So one and two. Now, what you've got to realise here is if we quickly go back to this, here we go. It was P squared and P, so it ended up being P in the middle. In this case, it's, keep going, keep going, X squared here, so it would be X squared. And that makes sense because if you were to multiply out the bracket, X squared times X squared would give you X to the power of 4. Now, I know everybody factorises differently. As I said, this is my way. If you like it, great. If you don't, I'm sorry. You know, everybody learns different ways. I can't cater for everyone so make sure you do see your teacher if a uh, this if you're in any doubt okay thank you